This video is for business leaders who want to maximize the potential of their employees uh, with mindset and other similar practices while staying completely scientific. So to be clear, most people are nowhere near their potential because they don't use mindset in a scientific way, yet they are almost superstitious uh, about, I can do anything. It's like, really? Can you fly? That is, can you flap your arms hard enough and fast enough to lift off the ground? The answer is absolutely not. So while mindset is very powerful, we still have laws of physics that we can't defy or break. Sounds silly, but it's true. Also, nobody can lift up a 747 without a mechanism to do that. They can't use their arms and legs and their muscles, regardless of their mindset, to make that happen. So I'm not saying this to be silly. I'm just saying it to get to the point that mindset is like, you can do anything. Actually, you can't. You can just do far more than you likely are thus far. That's the point that's really important. Um, so I'm sorry, but it's a matter of belief or lack of belief, lack of mindset that's preventing most people from having what they want and the laws of physics. So ultimately what it comes down to is for most people, it's their, not their lack of belief. It, that's one of the components, but it is the lack of them acting on their belief of their potential, though it may also be their mindset, which is below what they're capable of. Um, but it has to be within something you are capable of in terms of, as I said, physics, something that can actually be done in the real shared world rather than the inside world of your own imagination and belief, which is unlimited. But in the real world, I can't say I'm going to make a billion dollars a day every day for the rest of my life. I can say that, but that doesn't really translate over to the real world that everybody else occupies. So the good news of this, though, is even though objective reality doesn't allow us to do anything we want, unless you're Elon Musk or Bill Gates or Mark Cuban or someone like at that level, you have remarkable, seemingly unlimited potential to grow into. And even they got where they are because they understand that they have space above where they are to grow into but it is within the realm of physics. Like Elon Musk doesn't fantasize about making a rocket. He makes it and he tests it or measures it in the real world. And this is why I'm talking about merging mindset and measurement. So this goes into growth mindset, which I talked about yesterday and many times before, Carol Dweck's work. Essentially, growth mindset is with consistent hard work we can become more than we currently are in almost every capacity, including our intellect, our intelligence, and our capabilities. So here's kind of the way I'm going today. This is a ask yourself, what am I, re what can I do really, really well? Now be honest about this, something that not only you think you're good at, but other people have told you you're good at. It should come with that measurement side of it. Uh, once you've answered that question, ask yourself, do I like or love doing that? That is, is this sort of your dream job, your ikigai, which is sort of your reason for waking up or your purpose for being? If it is, awesome. If the answer is yes, ask yourself, what would the next level of this look like next year if I gave everything I had daily or almost daily for the next year at my maximum capability plus 10%. In other words, if I gave 110% every day or most days for the next year, what would those results look like? Okay, now an important point here, and I love this, I know a number of people who sort of work in this area of mindset, it should scare you. If it's like, I know I can do it, this will be easy, then that's not actually going to give you the drive you need and it won't give you the satisfaction when you achieve it. I can say, I know I can do one push-up, but that's nothing. That's for me 
and I'm not special to say this because most people can do one one push up. That's a pathetic goal. A guaranteed goal is not a goal worthy of striving for. So basically what it is is the goal should be challenging enough that you think you can probably do it if you give everything but still leaves you with some amount of doubt as to whether you can actually do it. So it's like you could, there is an actual risk of you failing, but if you work your very hardest, you can probably achieve it, but not 100%. It should scare you a bit, maybe even terrify you, but only within certain limits. So you want to be able to create enough doubt that you're a little afraid, but not so much doubt that you go, look, I just can't do this. This is beyond me. And you don't even try or you quit long before you achieve it. Now, if your answer to your question earlier of do I, what I'm really good at, do I love doing it, do I like doing it, if the answer to that is no, then ask yourself, how can I pivot? How can I use what is supporting me and taking care of me or helping me now that I'm good at? I may not love it, but how can I use that to pivot towards something that I would, would really love to do in the next year and what would that look like if I gave it a hundred hundred and ten percent all or most days for the next year at my maximum effort so now guesstimate how much daily time you can give all or most days to committing to reaching this destination that you've set out you just divide that number of days by the number of days in the year. So if you're going to do five days a week, so it's like five days a week, I have this much time. So this is a matter of time boxing or time blocking. So if that's 10 hours a day, that's 3,650 3, hours or 10 hours every single day. But you need to be realistic, and this gets back to the measurement, the real world part of it, and that is how much time can you commit all or most days of the year for the next year and that year can start now it doesn't have to start on new year's okay so unless you're basically independently wealthy or something like that you can't give 10 hours a day unless it's supported by your employer and it meshes with what you're doing for your job or what you're doing in your company if you're the owner then maybe you can and you're extremely lucky but for the rest of us we maybe have eight hours outside of sleep and work to be able to fit that in. Just remember that your whole life has to fit in that eight-ish hours of non-sleep, non-work time. So if you have kids, if you have other commitments, if you have physical health issues, if you have mental health issues, you need the time necessary to take care of those and the time remaining. And you look at that amount of time. So what I want you to do is strive to choose an amount of time, let's call it a Goldilocks amount of time, or the time, uh, let's see here, time and number of days, that's Goldilocks challenging. That means, as you already know, challenging enough, but not too easy, but just right. So it has to be enough time that it's a real challenge for you and Goldilocks challenges, what's so important about them is they feel awesome because it's like, I did it. It has to be challenging for you at your level. That's irrelevant to me. It's irrelevant to your uncle, your aunt, your brother, your sister, your world-class athlete friend, or your barely gets off the couch neighbor. It's exactly what's important to you. Now what you do is you get really simple. You say to yourself, what can I do the day before you, you do this, you say to yourself, what can I do immediately for X amount of time, whether it's one hour or three hours or 10 hours, to head towards that goal? I'll leave some stuff in terms of uh, recommendations and videos and that uh, in the description, but that's all the time we have for Crush It Club, Maximize Success, by merging mindset and measurement. My name is Tim B. Green. Bye for now.